Kylie Brandywine. My name is Kylie Brandywine and my twin sister Frances died two years ago. Let me tell you a story. My parents, Frances and I, were on vacation out in a Canadian nature reserve called Quatico. Frances was at the age of 17 when this happened to her, all alone with nobody by her side. Poor girl. Nobody knows what happened. Mum and Dad have gone crazy thinking what had happened to her. It was too much to take, so they decided to divorce, leaving me with my mum. Mum used to be a very confident lady, but the divorce has changed her. She is now completely different. It's as if someone has taken her confidence and locked it away. At the time of the accident, the police investigated Quatico. After they investigated the place, they told Mum that there were no evidence of Francis being there. They also told her that there was footprints by the lake, but they don't know whose they are. I also wondered to myself, why does she leave? Does she commit suicide? So many things to think about, so I thought, why not go find out myself? On the very night of Christmas, I snuck out of the quiet cottage where my mum slept peacefully on the couch. I hugged her for the beer last time. I had no choice. I headed straight to Quatico in my mum's car because she couldn't afford to buy me one. I was going to... It was one and a half hours just to get there, two hours to get there and back, two to three hours to get there and back, if I was ever going to come back. It was nothing like silence as I stepped out of the car. I was out of my comfort zone. I was all alone with nobody by my side. I started to get goosebumps all over my arms. I could hear howlings like the wind, except I couldn't feel the breeze. It was so strange. There was no cars passing by, which freaked me out. I was in the bed. I was in the middle of nowhere. I was just standing there by the gate, shivering with fear, saying my prayers so I could get out of there with all safe, with no cuts and bruises, and answers with my loved and dead sister. As I opened the gate, I could hear creaking noises. I started walking. I soon realised that I was nowhere near the campsite where we used to go camping. I'm doing this for everyone's own good. I couldn't risk anybody's life. I couldn't risk them going out there again. As time passed, I eventually reached the campsite. I wondered where it I wondered where her dead body was lying. I walked all around the campsite, but still, I couldn't see any marks or her dead body. I walked and searched. And then I remembered something. She said to me, she said that she wanted to go up to the lake when we were walking up the trail. So I thought that's where she went that night. I walked slowly closer to the lake and I soon found a rowboat stranded smack in the middle of the lake. I was like a bird with no brain. This was very, very dumb of me. Stupid and dumb. I swam and swam and eventually reached a stranded roadboat. It took me ages to get in, but I soon found a way. I realised that there was dry blood and scratches everywhere, just like a horror movie. My mouth hung for about 10 seconds with fear. Moments passed. I just wanted to get out of the boat so badly, but I couldn't because I was shivering cold and my legs were all numb, so I laid there. For more than 40 minutes, I heard somebody scratching underneath the boat. I thought it was only seaweed, but as I looked down, there was no seaweed, only darkness. As I checked for seaweed, all of a sudden, this medium-sized shadow was lurking in the darkness. The lake. Closed my eyes and clutched my hands tightly to my face. All of a, and then it popped out of the water. I jumped a couple of steps away. It was my sister, Frances. Francis, I said as I hugged her. She also hugged me back and said, Hello, my dear sister. But that did not sound like her one bit. As she hugged, as it hugged me, it said hello in a similar voice. I realized that it wasn't an it. It was a he. He turned into his normal form. He turned out to be an ugly, like, monster. That was looking underneath the boat. I pushed it away from me, but it jumped up and started to scratch me with his sharp nails. He started to scratch me until I was all bloody and had strings of flesh coming out of me. Then he viciously chucked me off the bloody rowboat and I drowned quietly, trying to call for help. But no one could hear me because no one was there. I died in vain, just like my sister, Frances. The end.